Ready? Go ahead. Hi, my name is Carmen Gonzalez, and today I'll be talking about Saranaca self determination. My purpose today is to inform individuals inside and outside this room of the case for Saranaca's self determination. Additionally, I want to persuade the audience to rally up for the people of Saranaca. First, we must understand what is self determination. Self determination is the principle of the international the international law that nations have the right to freely choose their sovereignty. Also, the international um, also their international political status without external compulsion. In other words, nations have the right of um, their independence and freedom without outside influence. Um, self determination is upheld by the United Nations. Um, Bill of International, um, Bill of Human Rights and the Indigenous People of the Declaration of Indigenous People, which was signed in 2007 by the General Assembly. Then first I'm gonna talk about the history of Saranaca. First, the geographics. Um, Saranaca is located on the eastern side of Libya, which Libya is in the northern part of Africa. Saranaca is adjacent to North, um, Northwest Tripletania and Southwest um, Fazan. Um, some interesting facts is it stretches from the city of Sirt, where Lamar Gaddafi was born, all the way to the eastern border of Egypt. It is the, the capital, Benghazi, is in the second largest city in Libya, and um, Libya's 75% of their oil reserves come, actually comes from Saranaka. And um, it is the birthplace of the revolution. A very big part of the history of Saranaka is their autonomy. In 1951, 10 years after that, the power was divided between Saranaka, Tripletania, and Fazan. And they were divided, and uh, under King Ingus, Saranaka had great power. However, Muammar Gaddafi's army took over and destroyed King Indra's empire. This created four, four year, I mean four decades of sidelining Saranaka. Lamar Gaddafi is a huge individual for the history of Saranaka. He was a dictator and he's been a dictator for four years since 1969. He used terror and he used fear to create his power and he he, think, he thought that money was the way to get to independence and to leadership. Why does Saranaka want this self-determination? The primary reason is mar marginalization and neglect. Saranaka, ironically, creates 75% of the income for the entire Libyan country. However, they are the poorest and the least economic progressed and developed. Unlike Tripletania and Fazan, which are much higher in their um, development. Saranaka has much dissatisfaction with the central government in, in Tripoli and underrepresentation in the pro parliamentary bar body, which an example is Saranaka has 66 votes. On the other hand, Tripoli has 126, which obvious is a not fair share. Um, another huge part is the president of the and the National Transitional Council, which it was created to help the, the people of um, Saranaka. However, it has a lot of shortcomings that has created problems for Saranaka, and that's why they want to kind of bring it down, restart the ground up. S some examples are the lack of transparency, the, the failure to protect minorities, the, um, the slow restoration of the parts hit most by the revolution, the revolution, which the revolution was in Saranaka, so obviously they have the hardest part. Um, the inability to bring their militia under control, which has been a very big problem, and the torturing of prisoners. Also a major theme, a theme of why Saranaka wants self-determination is Abdul Fattah Yunus. Abdul Fattah Yunus was Mamar Gaddafi's man, his go-to man who he went to when he needed help. He needed help with the rebellion, with the rebels, they came up and he wanted to destroy them, so he sent Eunice to go destroy them. However, in Eunice's journey, he found what they wanted was actually important, and it, 
it had reason and it had clarification. And so he understood, so he went to be on their side. This obviously created problems with Muammar Gaddafi, obviously, because he felt like he was a traitor. Another problem was the people really thought that he was kind of doing the whole keep your friends close and your enemies closer, really wanting him to stay on their side, but they, they still, a lot of people still welcomed him. However, when they really saw that he was really on their side was when he got assassinated, and it wasn't a normal assassination. He was burned, his eyes were gouged out, he was stabbed in the stomach, it was horrible, and it was a crime of humanity because it was, it was a symbolism of what they were going through because he was the person that almost, he was a symbolism. He, he, he was a rebel, and he was the, one of the biggest ones, and it was obvious, and they killed him in a way showing them what they wanted to do to them. The rise up is a very big deal. In March 6, 2012, 2012 the Saranaka people made the Converging Congress. In this Congress, the individuals in it were military men, elder, Congress, elder statesmen, um, citizens, just every, they were the people of Saranaka. The progress is they must have a di direct negotiation of represent, representation in parliamentary and a mediation through a trusted third party. This is a huge deal because I believe that this is one of the biggest deals is the mediation through a third party. Um, and I think the United States should be that mediation and be that trusted party. Um, they must have a recognized international court and it really ends with the people signing a referendum, which is almost like our Declaration of Independence stating what we're going to do, and that we're free, we're our own country, and that's what they need. My conclusion is I believe that Saranaka needs help. And actually from the new, newly voted in President of the United States, Barack Obama, he said, he is convinced that a failure to act in Libya would have carried a far greater price in America. This type of price is, is distressing and grievous for America because it shows where our heart is and what kind of country we really are. America must be that third country. If we look back on whenever we had our independence, we had a third country come in and that was the French and they came and helped us and really without them we probably wouldn't have been able to do what we did. So I believe that we need to be that trusted third party because it will not just help make our country distressed, it will make individuals in the country distressed, really see where our government is, it will make us dismal in our feelings and how we feel about our own country. So I believe that we need to help obtain Saranaka self-determination. So I'd like to end by saying let's rise up for the people of Saranaka. Thank you.